let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. We are here to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. In this closing worship service, let us stand at this time. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided. Let's everyone, everyone on your feet, please. Amen. I know it's been a long day. Amen. But nevertheless, God is still able. Amen. I have decided. changing hands.
and rivers in the desert. May the Lord add a blessing to the word. Amen. Amen. We will now hear from the voices of the annual conference. Amen. 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 Give them a hand as they stand. And render the song unto us. Amen. Even though we have this choir here today, we are all the voices of the annual conference. And if you hear this song and you know this song, join in with us as we get ready to sing, I Need You to Survive. Mm.
How many know that we need the Lord? We need the Lord and we need one another to survive. Amen. As the Joint Board comes at this time, the Joint Board of Finance, uh, the Ministry of Giving, uh, a scripture from Proverbs 11, 24, which says, one person gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty, meaning you got it, but you just won't give it. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. We know what our closing offering for. The closing offering has been asked for for $50. And those who don't have $50, don't let that stop you from giving. Amen. Uh, give what you have. Amen. Amen. And you will be directed by the ushers. Amen. Amen. Cheer up. We're getting ready to hear another mighty word from our bishop. Rejoice and be glad. Amen. Please come and be on Lord. Elder 
of the Southwest District. And then that will be followed by the hymn of preparation, more love to thee. Amen. Amen. But right now, uh, the Southwest District's presiding elder, Dr. Claude A. Bass. Amen. I stand to relinquish this assignment today to the 50th Bishop of the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church, retired senior bishop, Paul A. G. Stewart. say about our speaker. He's an excellent father. He's a scholar. He's a teacher. He's a leader of transparency. He's going to make you know what's going on. But I guess the most important thing I can say right now is he's an agent. Now y'all know we have FBI agents. We have insurance agents, military secret agents. But I present to you one who is an agent, but he has no license to be an agent. He's a change agent. For good, for love, and justice. But he's also an agent of reconciliation. He brings people together. Help people come together in love. I don't know what his favorite scripture is, but when I think about him, I think of the 133rd Psalm. How good and how pleasant it is for brothering and sisters to dwell together in unity. After this next song, the next voice you will hear will be our bishop, Bishop Marvin Frank Thomas. Let's stand to welcome and thank God for our bishop. Let's stand and give up. Let's give God some praise. Let us remain standing now and sing this song. More love to thee.
Thank you, Mr. Stewart. And let me thank all of you for a great annual conference. And thank all of our preachers who have stood behind this sacred desk and blessed us in our time together. And I would invite each of you to remember and ponder those sermons in case this gets nowhere close to <laughs> you'll have some frame of reference Amen. Amen. but we just thank God for this day and this opportunity Amen. let us pray Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. My soul looks up with a steadfast hope. Not my will, but thine be done. Give life and meaning to these words. And when all is said and done, it is to your name we shall give the praise. Amen. Amen. I, know this, I know that our annual conference theme is seeing new. Now what? I want to invite your attention to a passage of scripture recorded in the second chapter of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 2. And I want to lift in your hearing verse 1. From the New International Version, that's Isaiah chapter 2, verse 1. This is what Isaiah, son of Ammon, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. This is what Isaiah, son of Ammon, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. For a few moments, I'm going to share with you some rambling thoughts from the subject that piggybacks on the tail end of our theme. I want to talk for a few moments from the subject seeing beyond now. Seeing beyond now. The prophet Isaiah is probably one of the more, one of the most familiar and best known of the Old Testament 8th century prophets. He was born in Jerusalem. We don't seem to know much about his parents. We are told who his father is. In the text we find these words. This is what Isaiah, son of Ammon, saw. It tells us the name of his father. All right. In other words, the text says, in essence, <coughs> Isaiah was Amon's boy. All right. All right. We are told that he and his wife had two sons. Mm -hmm. Other than these tidbits, nothing else is known yes. about his family background. Right. However, we do know that he's a prophet called by God. Right. In the sixth chapter of the book bearing his name, we witness Isaiah's call to the prophetic ministry. It says, beginning with verse 1, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a throne high and exalted. And the train of his robe filled the temple. Before Isaiah concludes, 
describing this experience, he hears a question. Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? To which he replied, here am I. Send me. Isaiah lived about 700 years before Christ. His name means God of salvation. One of his claims to fame as a prophet was his focus on what biblical scholars call the Messianic prophecy. Where he predicted the coming of Jesus, the Messiah. To save mankind from its sin. It is in this context. That we spend time with the prophet. Isaiah. Today. In the text. He is doing what a prophet does. He is seeing. Beyond the now. He's looking. And pointing toward the not yet or the shall be. In other words, he's, he is seeing what's on the horizon. This is one of the jobs of a prophet. To see ahead of the now. Another word for the prophet is seer. Which is defined to mean one who sees. Yeah. In this case, one who sees for God. All right. The prophet's job is not to see for him or herself, All right. All right. but to see what God has of God's sleep. Yeah. All right. In the second chapter of this book. We find the prophet Isaiah on the job of doing what he is to do as a prophet. He is seeing beyond the now. We notice this because of a little three-letter word we find in the text. It's this little simple word, saw. The text says, this is what Isaiah, son of Amon, saw. This word suggests that at some point in time, the prophet had a vision or revelation of what God had in store for Judah and Jerusalem. If we were to back up to the beginning of the book, chapter 1, verse 1, we find these words. The vision concerning Judah and Jerusalem that the son of Amon saw during the reigns of Isaiah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Here we notice the method by which Isaiah saw what he saw. It was in a vision. It was in a vision that took place in a specific time frame. It was during the reign of the four aforementioned kings of Judah. The people were rebellious against God. And God used Isaiah in chapter 2 to help them see Beyond the now. He wanted them to know. That God has something better. In store. For them. The prophet's vision. Of a better time and day for Jerusalem. Was not for Jerusalem per se. Nor about Jerusalem. It was all about. The Lord. Yeah. Yeah. The glorious future. Yeah. All right. The prophet envisioned. Yeah. Is 
is for God. Yeah. It's what to be a time when God desired relationship with Jerusalem yeah. was to be the order of the day. Yeah. It, it was a day. It was to be the day that the Lord reigned yeah. as supreme as the supreme being he is. Yeah. Are y'all with me? Yeah. In verses 2 through 5. Yes, sir. The prophet puts in word mm -hmm. what the envisioned reality look, will look like. Yeah. In the last day, yeah. the mountain of the Lord's yeah. temple yeah. Yeah. will be established as chief yeah. my, my, my. among the mountains. Yes, yeah. It will be raised above the hill. Yeah. And all the nations will stream to it. Yeah. Many people will say, come, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, yeah. to the house of Jacob. Yes, he will teach us his way yeah. so that we may walk yeah. in his path. Yeah. The law yeah. will go out from Zion. Yeah. The word of the Lord right. from Jerusalem. Yeah. He will judge yeah. between nations yeah. and will settle disputes yeah. for many people. Yeah. They will beat their swords in the plowshare yeah. and their spears into burning shook. Burning shook. Yeah. The nations will not take up sword against nation, yeah. nor will they train for war anymore. Yeah. Yeah. In these words, yeah. Yeah. the prophet yeah. is pointing toward what is yeah. to come. Yeah. These things are not now, yeah. but there is coming a time yeah. when these will govern the way things will be. Yeah. My friends, the prophet is describing a brighter day for the church. Yeah. When we see the church today, she is in trouble. It is difficult for people. It is difficult to get people to come. It is more common to invite people to a party than to a praise. People are quick to go any and everywhere except the Lord's house on Sunday. One of the reasons. Our nation is in the mess it is in today. Yeah. It's because we have failed to study and live by the word of God. Yeah. Every day, yeah. the news reminds us of how disputes are settled yeah. among friends and enemies. Yeah. The rapid rise yes, of gun violence all across yeah. the land. Yeah. My beloved. Can y'all give me a few more minutes? Yeah. Yeah. My beloved, yeah. the now we find ourselves in yeah. at a place and a nation and a church Come on, Bishop. Come on, Bishop. that's not in keeping with what God wants of us yeah. as a world, nation, and church. Yeah. I'm sure you will agree with me when I say the now, the now. It's not good. Yeah. The now yeah. is a troubling time. Yeah. Undergirded by, poly, by partisan politics yeah. that seeks to destroy our democracy. Yeah. The, now the now is a very dark time. Yeah. Yeah. The, now the now seems to be a time when all hope is gone. Yeah. But in spite of it all, yeah. God has a plan. Yeah. Beyond the now. Yeah. God through the prophet yeah. invites us his people, yeah. his church to walk in the light. Yeah. Listen to God's invitation. Yeah. In verse 5 of chapter 2 of Isaiah. Yeah. Come, yeah. O house of Jacob. Yeah. Let us walk yeah. in the light of the Lord. Yeah. Don't you see it? And don't you hear it? Yeah. God wants something different. Yeah. God wants something better yeah. for his church yeah. and for his people. Yeah. So he tells the prophet yeah. what he will do. Yeah. What he wants. Yeah. He will bring it about beyond the now. Yeah. Through 
his son, Jesus. This is what Advent is all about. It's about God. Seeing beyond the now. It's about God. It's about what God shall do. Through the coming Messiah. It's about what shall be. And not what is. A revisit of the text. Let's us in on. What the beyond, what the beyond now will be. As we come close, we come to the close of the annual conference. And go back to the places we be from. Or to new places. What shall we take with us? What are we to take away? From the good news and challenges yeah. of seeing beyond now. Yeah. We can take away a new excitement. Yeah. Knowing a better is on the way. Yeah. We can tell our children. Uh-huh. They can dream dreams yeah. that are no longer impossible dreams. Yeah. Yeah. We can speak a future oh. into the life of our churches. Yeah. No matter how dark and dim they are, there's a brighter day. There's a brighter day ahead. We can dream a better reality for ourselves and for our churches. We can take from here the good news. The good news, the good news of all of the already come and yet coming Jesus. He's coming anew. He's coming to bring us out of darkness into the marvelous light. The beyond now means death does not have the last word. There is a resurrection. And I'm not just talking about a resurrection from physical death. I'm talking about a resurrection of ministry. Ain't that good news? The good news for the church yeah. is that God is still in the resurrection business. Yeah. Yeah. God is still in the resurrection business. Yeah. The beyond now means that our sons and daughters can dare to be whatever they put their minds to be. Yeah. The beyond now means the night is passing. Yeah. It looks dark right now. Yeah. But I've come by to tell you morning. Morning is coming. Morning is coming. Morning is coming. Morning is coming. The beyond now means new wine. The old wine skin. The beyond now means a better is on the way. So what does it take? What does it take to see beyond the now? It takes being in tune with God. It means that we've got to be in tune with him. Yeah. We've got to be in tune with God. Yeah. Because God not only knows what lies ahead, yeah. but God is in the business of paving the way. Yeah. It takes faith in God. It takes faith to see beyond the now. It doesn't take faith to see the now is, but to see beyond the tears, the hurt, the disappointments, and the loss, and what happened. It requires a faith that will not shrink, no matter what. This is the good news for us today. God invites us, East Tennessee region, God invites us to have a beyond now faith. A crazy beyond now faith. With this faith, darkness give way to light. With this faith, despair makes room for hope. With this faith, darkness readies itself for hope. With this faith, the beat gives away to victory. With this faith, closed doors are open. With this faith, we can endure the now because we know something better. It's on the way. Yeah. Well, now comes a brighter day. Yeah. Aren't you glad about it? Yeah. But then the good news is yeah. that you don't have to go beyond now by yourself. Yeah. I've come by to tell you yeah. there's a traveling partner. Yeah. There's somebody who promises yeah. to be with us yeah. as we journey beyond now. He said, I've seen the lightning flash. Yeah. I've heard the thunder roll. Yeah. I've built shit breakers dashing, yeah. trying to conquer my soul. Yeah. But 
did I hurt? I heard the voice of Jesus did to steal the fight off. Continue to work with me, um, Reverend Byers. When I was uh, growing up in Thomasville, they, they used an expression when they really wanted you to hear what was said. They would make a statement and, and to emphasize strongly what you heard. My grandmother Dyson would say, did you hear me? <laughs> I want to know, did you hear? Did you hear? Yeah. I like my grandmother Dyson would say, did you hear me? There is a brighter day. Sometimes we grow weary because of the immediate. But God has already promised us over and over and over and over and over and over again that he's in charge of this world. He may let, let some people act a fool for a little while. But don't vex yourself over evil do. Because in due time, God will take care of it. But you and I as children of God, we must remain steadfast, unmovable. We must remain strong in our faith, in our belief. There is a better day. You heard the bishop. Now, I'm going to extend to you an invitation to Christian discipleship. Because that is part of our protocol. But more importantly, it is a call for us to, to receive Jesus. And to believe that there is something greater than the now. I'm going to ask you to stand. If there's one or two or three or four who heard the word. And you're ready to give yourself to Christ for your salvation. Let me extend to you the invitation to Christian discipleship. Praise the Lord.
offering $1,467. Amen. 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 Let me thank you so much for your presence and for your participation in the 49th session of the East Tennessee Region Annual Conference. Thank you, Bishop Stewart, for sharing this journey with us. here, here. Thank you so much for being with us. There is one final business item before this conference. Question number 53. Where are the preachers stationed for the ensuring conference year? Southwest District. Presiding Elder Dr. Ronald Pope. That's the district I'm calling. Chapel, Goodnessville, Reverend Woodrow Harris Jr. Supply, Capus Memorial, Nashville, Reverend Dwayne Moore, Chattanooga CME Church, Reverend Dr. Bethel Hendricks, Reverend Dr. Mary Hendricks, Coles Chapel, Henry, Reverend Diamond Payne, Dorchester Chapel, Reverend Donna Hyde, Greater White's Chapel, Springfield, Reverend Dr. Claire Jasper Crafter. Hamlet Chapel, Chattanooga, Reverend Henry McLean. Johnson Temple, McKenzie, Reverend Dr. Wilma Pearson Supply. Maddie Coleman, Knoxville, Reverend Cassandra Wheatley, Reverend Anto Antoine Barnes, Assistant Pastor. Murfreesburg CME, Reverend Darrell A. Ballard II. Phillips Chapel, Nashville, Reverend Alfred Douglas McKenzie. Phillips Temple, Chattanooga, Reverend Robert Henry. St. James Erin, Reverend LaShanta Reed. St. James Laverne, Reverend James Nunn. St. Luke, Nashville, Reverend Dr. Ronald Pope. Reverend LaMail Brandon Neal, Assistant Pastor. Reverend Darrell Ballard II, Associate Minister. St. Mary Tattanooga. Reverend David L. Young, Jr. Reverend Kadaris Scott, Assistant Pastor. Second Grove White House. Reverend Damian Kendricks. Wesley Chapel, Clarksville. Reverend Johnny Kendall. Williams Chapel, Oak Hickory. Reverend James I. Buford and Reverend Pamela Y. Buford, Assistant Pastor. Board of Christian Education, Reverend Gataria Jackson, Assistant Director. Board of Studies, Mrs. Evelyn Barlow, President. Board of Ushers, what's, what's, what's your first name? Bertia. Bertia. Byers, Chair, President. Conference Musician, Reverend Roderick Byers. Joint Board of Finance, Reverend David Young, Clergy, Mr. Joshua Hager, Lay. Lay Leader, Mrs. Vera Merriweather. Minute Committee on Ministerial Examination, Reverend Patricia Butner, Reverend James Buford, Reverend Dwayne Moore, 
Trustee Reverend Robert Henry Chair. The Southwest District. Presiding Elder Reverend Dr. Claude A. Bass. Bassam Chapel, Reverend Dalton Thompson. Beach Grove Pinson, Reverend Uday. Blair's Chapel Jackson, Reverend William Cole Sr. Cleese Temple, to be supplied. Denmark Jones, Denmark Mercer, Reverend Claude A. Bass. Dyer, Reverend Fred Powell. Fabio Bells, Reverend Jerome Perry. Farmer Chapel, Brownsville, Reverend James G. Dowell, Sr. Graham Chapel, Savannah, Reverend Dr. Fitzgerald McBride. Holger Chapel, Gaston, Reverend George Turks. Hurst Chapel, Jackson, Reverend Freeman McKendra II. Johnson Chapel, Trenton, Reverend Anthony Menzi. Lane Chapel, Humboldt, Reverend Dr. Darrell H. Coleman. Lane Chapel, Huntersville, Reverend James G. Dowell. Lane Tabernacle Jackson, Reverend Dr. H. Leon Williams Supply, Martin Tabernacle Trenton, Reverend Paul Lacey, Medina Circuit, Hope Hill, Reverend Yolanda Ward, Medina, Medina, Medina to be supplied, Montezuma Henderson, Reverend Amir McCarthy. Mother Liberty, Reverend Dr. Carmichael Crushfield, Mount Pilgrim, Pilgrim Trenton, Reverend Ernest Liggins Supply, Mount Pleasant Jackson, Reverend Margaret Blackman, Mount Pleasant Milan, Reverend Anthony Menzi, Mount Zion Henderson, Reverend Jerome Perry, Mount Zion Union City, Reverend Darrell Turner, Mount Carmel Jackson to be supplied, Philip Parker Chapel, Gibson, Reverend McCarthy, our our. I'm in Rock McCarthy. Philip Chapel Milan to be supplied. Prospect Browns More Brown Brownsville. Reverend Zachary Love. Rock of Ages Tiftonville, Reverend George Turk. St. Paul Jackson, Reverend Dr. Claude A. Bass. Salem Jackson, Reverend Valerie Connolly. St. Peter's Brownsville, Reverend Zachary Love. Tabernacle Brownsville to be supplied. Womack Temple Diasburg, Reverend Young. Yolanda Ward, Reverend Margaret and Margaret, was Martin's first name? Margaret. Margaret. Margaret Martin, Associate Minister St. Paul, Reverend David Reed, retired, Reverend Elvin McCray, local preacher. From William Jarman, Associate Lane Tabernacle. From Willie Allen's in the hands of the presiding elder. Reverend Pat Winston, Associate Minister, Mother, Mother Liberty. Reverend Carrie Booker, Associate Minister, Lane Tabernacle, Lane Chapel, Humboldt. Reverend Gallion Fulton, retired. Joint Board of Finance, Reverend William O. Cole, Senior Chair. Reverend Zachary Love, intern. Miss Alicia Brooks, Mr. Treasurer, Miss can't build the joint board to be the church, so she has to come out. This is Sonia Hunter Lake. All right. Women's missionary president for the East Tennessee region, Ms. Mrs. Harford the Moss. God be with you till we meet again. Let's stand, let us sing, God be with you till we meet again. Oh, I'm sorry, hold on just one second. Reverend Tamela Wilburn with Reverend...
let me say how delighted I am to have served in the East Tennessee Annual Conference since 2011. It's been the challenges, but the good has been better than the bad. And I want to thank all of you for the love that you have shown towards my wife and I and uh, the much encouragement. And I would be remiss if I didn't thank Phillips Chapel in particular uh, for the way they have stood with my family a uh, little better than three years. God bless you. I love you. And I will always have you all in my prayer. Thank uh, Mr. Palmer for the love and support he's given. And then my uh, elder, Elder Bad all the support that he has given and he has shown. Amen. Dr. Taylor. Yes, sir. Southwest District for the Mother Liberty Church, Reverend Frieda Crossfield, Minister in Residence. You may be seated. If there is nothing else, there's no other business before this conference. At the may I have a motion to adjourn this conference at the conclusion of the of the prayer by Reverend retired Minister Reverend Joseph Taylor, Reverend Dr. Joseph Taylor. May I have a motion? And Reverend Lamont Mohead is transferred to the uh, Birmingham region. Let's have a second one minute. Let's stand and let's sing God. We may have a motion. I need a motion to vote. Second? Second. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those of the eyes have it in so order. Thank you for a great conference. Thank you for a great conference. You wrote me out. I enjoyed every second of it. Can't wait to hang out with y'all again. God be with you till we meet again, and then Reverend Joseph Taylor is going to offer our closing prayer.
<laughs> Heavenly Father, we come at this time thanking you for all that has taken place in this beautiful, wonderful annual conference. Lord, we ask you to bless our presiding freely, our pastor, representative pastor, host pastor. Bless uh, uh, Bishop Stewart as well. And bless all of the presiding elders and all the representatives throughout this conference. Yes, we pray that you will speak to it that only blessings will come to each and every one right. attending to here today. Throughout this coming year, and please be with us, Lord, and watch over us all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.